Okay, so, so, so now we go on to the next section. What are the clinical evidence uh, behind the use of acupuncture in treating chronic pain? So we're going to start all the way back to 1997 uh, in the NIH in the U.S. where they have issued a landmark NIH consensus which stated that for the following three conditions, we know for sure acupuncture does help, and these include post-operative dental pain, post-operative nausea vomiting, as well as chemotherapy-induced nausea vomiting. So these are all, these have been known to be helpful for the last 20 plus years. The next question, however, is what about other conditions? So NNH uh, stated that for the following 11 conditions, um, acupuncture will pro is probably helpful, but more research is needed. So you can see here, highlighted um, in the third bullet point here, out of the 11 conditions, eight of which are chronic pain. You can see there's a, a strong emphasis of chronic pain uh, treatment by acupuncture. And as a result of this uh, NIH consensus, um, fundings became available, and there's a uh, basic a surge of uh, research uh, activities since that time, both in the US and also in, in Europe, particularly Western Europe. So, uh, so the following show slides shows a pretty, uh, pretty summarized summary slides of um, what acupuncture has been shown to be helpful for. These include low back pain, um, arthritis, um, headaches, um, and neck pain. And again, I want to emphasize a lot of our, our studies are not just within the U.S. but also within Germany. Where um, and the story behind that was uh, in Germany. You probably know already, um, in Western Europe, the, the attitude toward alternative medicine is much more serious and much more accept, uh, tolerable, tolerant than here. So they are really the forerunners in using herbs as well as acupuncture and alternative therapies in treating common medical conditions. For example, most of the physicians in Germany are trained in acupuncture. And, uh, and the reason acupuncture was widely studied in national projects was because there was a strong incentive to use acupuncture by the patients. In the 1990s, however, the government wasn't quite sure if acupuncture indeed is a, use, uh, is a useful and efficacious therapy. Therefore, they funded large thousand patients' um, projects to, to look at um, if acupuncture can help in clinical trials, randomized and controlled. So um, I'm not, I'm not going to bore you with the details. The bottom line is um, most, most of these trials are, are definitively positive, showing a benefit of acupuncture. But there is one caveat, and that is um, where they use controls of acupuncture. Because you want to eliminate the placebo effect. So people design various controls as placebo for acupuncture, where they actually use real needles to puncture sites near the real acupuncture sites. It turned out that these control interventions were shown to be just as helpful as the real acupuncture. So that has been a major criticism for the use of acupuncture, particularly in America. But regardless of that, acupuncture became funded after these large German studies to treat the following conditions. Again, arthritic pain, particularly the knee and the shoulder, two, headaches, tension, headache, migraines, and number three, um, chronic back pain and neck pain, spine pain. Okay, so as an example, hold on. All right. Okay, so so this is a, uh, the German um, low back pain trial where 1,162 uh, patients uh, were enrolled. They were randomized to to three arms where there's the real acupuncture, the sham, or the control acupuncture, and uh, conventional care. And they had robust measures of outcome, both including both pain scores from the von Korff scale and also functional ability. Um, they have found, and also they defined responder as a, at least a, a third pain reduction or at least 12% in functional improvement. And um, interestingly, they did not look at the immediate um, response. They looked at response after six months, which is very impressive. It's basically saying acupuncture is helpful even six months after the original treatment. And um, as you can see here, um, 
Group one is real acupuncture, group two is sham acupuncture, and group three is uh, placebo. Uh, sorry, not placebo, it's uh, um, uh, conventional care, where, where there's physical therapy, medications, and physician therapy up to 10 sessions. So all of, and you can see, there's a significant improvement uh, compared to conventional care uh, by both real acupuncture and sham acupuncture, okay? Um, and a similar trial took place in the U.S. just about a few years later in 2010, and that's um, conducted by Dr. Daniel Churkin from Oregon, and they enrolled 630 patients with chronic low back pain, and to further figure out does the location of needle matter in treating chronic back pain with acupuncture? They actually formulated two real acupuncture treatments. One is a standard treatment. They just give a bunch of needles in the back, couple in the feet and the arm, and say, that's it, uh, safe for everybody. And another one, they use the pulse diagnosis, take your pulse, look at the tongue, do the whole thing, and individualize the treatments. And the results, the study is also very interesting. They showed a lack of difference between all three forms of acupuncture, including the sham acupuncture and the two form of virum, real acupuncture. Again, they showed significant improvements over um, conventional care where medication therapies and, um, um, and medications were used, but not difference between acupuncture arms. Here's the result. The one on top is functional improvement. Right in the middle is at 26 weeks, which is roughly six months since the treatment. You can still see significant improvement of all three acupunctures in the bottom and uh, the one of uh, conventional care on top. And that was pain score on the vertical axis of the top graph. Actually, it was a functional uh, improve, it was a uh, functions, a uh, fun functional impairment, okay? And in the bottom is pain. Um, you can see the pain, the pain reduction was also significantly uh, more for the three acupuncture arms uh, at six weeks, sorry, at six months, but at, uh, at 12 months, a year later, the difference was, was not significant anymore, okay? All right, it's just, um, so that, that's a brief summary um, of the evidence behind the use of acupuncture in treating chronic pain using low back pain example. And this is just a picture of China. By way of introduction, I actually grew up in China. Um, this is southern China, which actually I have not been to. It's from Sichuan province, near where the pandas are. They're very, very lovely um, areas. Um, where I'm from is actually this part of the country. Uh, it's northern China. This is actually a, a night in the town uh, during one of the festivals. Um, this part is called the Yellow Plateau. It's pretty dry but uh, it's also very old. Okay, so I also wanted to introduce you a very important study, at least for the field of all acupuncturists um, considered. This, uh, we, call, we consider this study to be landmark, and that was done by Dr. Andrew Vikers and published in October of last year. They did, so typically when you do meta-analysis, you look at a bunch of uh, studies, you, you combine them together. But this one, they actually went to the individual level. They, normal, they normalized amongst all studies. Um, and they used a total of 17,922 patients, um, all with various kinds of chronic pain, including neck pain, back pain, headaches, and arthritis, okay? And um, they have found, actually, the idea is behind this, the, the, the drive behind this large study was maybe there is a difference between the real and sham acupuncture. Maybe it's just too small compared to the, the placebo effect from the sham acupuncture. If we increase the sample size, we may be able to see a difference. And lo and behold, they actually saw a difference between the virum and sham acupuncture arms. And effect size uh, was basically um, 0.5 between real acupuncture and conventional care, and that decreased to 0.2 if you change the control from conventional care to sham acupuncture. Again, in the chronic pain concern, 0.2 is not necessarily a bad number. Um, one study, I think in 2008, by a British, uh, in published in British Medical Journal, demonstrated that the effect of NSAIDs in treating chronic back pain was also about 0 0.2. So in other words, acupuncture if you compare that, the, the pure acupuncture effect subtracted from the placebo effect, it still is it's significant, it's not nothing, 
Okay, so so this is just a pictorial uh, representation of uh, the relative differences between standard care, sham, and mere acupuncture. It's all relative, right? Because we know standard care is not zero. Actually, it does help, but we kind of we just we just normalize against standard care here. Okay. So another way to interpret the results. So. Imagine the typical pain score is 60 out of 100 with standard deviation 25. Then VRM acupuncture would result in pain score of roughly 25, sham of 35, and conventional care of roughly 43. Um, and um, I think as we talked about, so we know acupuncture is helpful, um, but we know that whatever the design we use for the placebo acupuncture, there's a significant effect of placebo acupuncture as well. From a clinical perspective, however, um, I think I, I think it's less relevant in that whatever I think I think especially in the treatment of chronic pain and also in treatment with depression, the effect of placebo is usually pretty profound. And I believe um, this issue of um, this issue of minimal difference or not great difference between sham and VRM treatment is not unique to acupuncture alone. I think earlier on, I think uh, with a lot of antidepressant treatment and also with uh, psychotherapy, in particular CBT uh, in treatment of uh, chronic pain, there has been also reports of um, issues distinguishing placebo from VRM treatments. So um, another sort of um, relevant point of um, acupuncture research is um, what are the key parameters that contribute to its benefit? At this point, we're still not 100% sure. Some studies show that the provider factor is not necessarily the most important, um, that the years of education did not seem to contribute to difference in the effect size of acupuncture treatment. And also, what about the mold? The Chinese acupuncture is indeed different from the French and also the Korean and Japanese acupuncture, do, are there any differences from different styles? And the answer is we actually don't know yet. At this point, um, we're still trying to figure out the satisfactory effect size differences between the virum and sham, not to mention between various forms of virum. Okay. Next point, um, I, uh, I missed Sean's lecture this morning, but um, I have a feeling he probably talked about this as well. So this is um, our lab's project, which I'm involved with. It is the, uh, which actually I would take it, it's not just our lab, actually also, we also collaborate with, um, um, with the, the pain center, where actually Ravi is also one of our consultants for, the, for one of our, our, our arms. So this is a three-arm study funded by the National Center for Complementary and Heart Medicine, where we were uh, to study three different interventions to treat uh, chronic low back pain. And these include, um, this very cool called uh, real-time functional MRI, where you basically you can think of it as a biofeedback using um, MRI machines real-time. Very cool and very expensive. And number two uh, is um, CBT and mindfulness meditation compare, compare and contrast. And number three is our project, where we look at the effect of acupuncture, both the room electric acupuncture and sham acupuncture, um, looking at its, their mechanisms in treating chronic back pain. Okay. Um, and, okay, again, despite the controversy, we want to conclude that acupuncture is a helpful therapy for treating chronic pain. Um, whether or not there's a profound placebo effect, the fact we put needles into patients seems to be quite helpful in reducing pain in terms of spine pains, arthritic pain, as well as headaches. Um, and the effect is quite long-lasting. Most of the studies were using six-month or 12-month uh, time mark to look at the benefits and difference between, between therapies. And we can see that the benefits is long-lasting to six to 12 months afterwards. And it's cost-effective based on one study in Germany.